I'm Mexican American, so it, thank you. <laughs> it's LA. There should be more of that, but <laughs> heck, I, there's one here. Uh, you know, it was odd that I wanted to be an actor. I mean, let's face it. That was I was five kids in one bedroom at one point growing up, and my parents were the other bedroom. So, uh, you know, I didn't. I, I wasn't one of those poor brown brown kids growing up. You know, I was more poor brown kid going out, um, growing up in La Mesa with a lot of rich white kids around me. So I had a different perspective. So actually, they took me from the barrio, from the hood, <laughs> and moved me up to the upper middle class neighborhood. <laughs> so because of it, I got to live in both worlds. So I got to learn to be a versatile. I went to a place called the Old Globe Theater, and they were having auditions for Romeo and Juliet, and I took my high school picture and I cut it out, and I put it at the back of an envelope and I made up a resume. <laughs> and I went in there and I said, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks. And I was this beautiful voice came out of my mouth and I had memorized everything. And they were so impressed, they're like, uh, you know, it was just uh, uh, odd to them. And they said, this is amazing, you're so good. And you're so young. And I said, yeah, well, you know, that's what I do. I, I know Shakespeare, I really like it. And uh, had no training whatsoever. And he said, well, we'd like to hire you for our Globe Education Tour. And I said, fantastic, but I wanted to renegotiate. So, <laughs> so, so first thing I did, I renegotiated. I said, you know, I want to learn every role here. So I'd like to understudy as well. And I will take certain roles and I'll understudy. And I need to be trained because I don't know much about Shakespeare training, I've just taught myself. So there's actors here that are really good actors. I'd like to have time with them to be trained by them. And so basically I created a conservatory. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would go to the Old Globe and there'd, there'd be these people training me and I remember some of these old names in Hollywood were, were amazing actors. And uh, so I learned a very important lesson. One, ask for things. They, sh they didn't kick me out, they said okay. And that's the beauty is when you're first starting out, a lot of times your innocence will get you over hurdles that you'd ever imagine. So I said, okay, they gave me everything I wanted. Everything, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Improv is just saying yes. So I said, okay, I can handle yes, that's pretty easy. <laughs> so what I did is I, I showed up and they said, you know, have you ever done improv before? Yes, I have. <laughs> I didn't consider it lying because I was told to say yes. So I was following my direction as an actor by saying yes. Would you like to do an improv with us? Yes, I would. And they would do it and I would just agree to everything they were there. Yes, of course. There's, look, there's a big iceberg. Yes, there is. It's the biggest one I ever saw, Captain. <laughs> wow. And so the yes led to all these great choices and I got hired. And there was this Mexican guy, me, and a black single mother named Whoopi Goldberg. So, so me and Whoopi, we first started off together. And she said, Rick, if we stay here longer, all we have to do is write. And I got $250 a day. <laughs> well, yes, I can write. <laughs> so, so I started writing, and we started writing together, actually. So it was really great. And I learned a lot from her. So this is where first lesson. Don't underestimate yourself. Do not underestimate yourself. There are plenty of people they're in this world that I guarantee you will underestimate you. And they will be some of the people you love. But in a strange way, you have to let yourself see your own potential. Recently, uh, a year and a half ago, I was in a coma for two weeks. I don't say this too often, <laughs> it's in my book, Almost White, which was really gonna be called Almost White Light because I came that close. And I nearly died. And I thought about it. Because when you're in a coma, not that you're really aware, there was no moment, there was no God speaking to me, going, Rick, Rick. <laughs> I would turn around and be, no, not you, Rick, different Rick, I'm sorry. <laughs> From the back, you look like this other Rick. There's a different guy. When I came out, I started looking at life differently. What I began to do was appreciate all the different accidents in my life. So that's why I started writing the book Almost White. I didn't ever intend to write a book. I've done, as you can see, a lot of writing in my lifetime. I never intended to be a writer either. I just want you to let you know. 
a lot of times as actors, we have to work out of necessity, which is great. Because if someone would have said, any time during my life, you've got to do this, I probably wouldn't have done it. There's normally an obstacle. And as you know, as an actor, uh, we're, our acting is better when there's an obstacle. We have a strong objective. We have conflict. And conflict leads to drama. And conflict leads to comedy. And this is where we talk about actors of, of diversity. You probably have to do more than any other actor. Because the thing is, your career becomes more and more about you, about what you do with it. When there isn't opportunities, you must create your own opportunities. And now, later on, as you'll see, and I'll talk about later on, there's more and more of those opportunities happening. You need to find your showcase. 